Hello students, welcome to Learner's Planet in the class of Biology. Now we are starting with the next session of the chapter Fundamental Unit of Life. Now it must be very much clear that which unit is known as a fundamental unit. Of course that is a cell. And now actually we, are, we have already started with the study of various parts of the cell. The cell is comprised of three things in general. They are that is membrane, cell membrane, the cytoplasm and the nucleus. So in the previous sessions we were discussing about the plasma membrane. We have studied about the basic characteristic features of plasma membrane and now in this session we are actually going to study about the structure of the plasma membrane. So basically this plasma membrane is made up of lipids and proteins. We have studied till now that the plasma membrane is flexible, it is semi-permeable in nature. But chemically, can you think of what it is made up of? We have introduced it in the previous session, but actually this plasma membrane is made up of lipids and proteins. And this is what we are going to study in detail. That how these proteins and the lipids are present, how they are arranged in the membrane, how it supports the structure. So now, let us study one by one about the arrangement of lipids and the proteins in the plasma membrane. How it supports the structure of these membranes. So, these lipid molecules actually they are arranged in two layers they are not a single layer structure rather the lipid molecules they are arranged in two layers as a stack you can say or one above the other and hence this model is a it is forming a bilayer structure so can you imagine uh, that why these lipids are arranged in two layers here is it because they like or is it because uh, it is a design? No, actually it is because of the physical and chemical properties of these lipid molecules. You can see this diagram here, this picture. Uh, you can see the balls in these uh, structures above and below. And beside this, in the towards the downward side, there are these tail like structures. The black bodies you can see which are attached to these round structures. So that's what we are going to understand now. That why such type of arrangement is present in the plasma membrane. See, in this structure, you can see this ball with the attached black threads. So in this case, two threads are attached to a single round body. Now this single uh, round body with two black thread-like structures is a single lipid molecule. The function or the characteristic of these is that you can see these round structures they are basically hydrophilic in nature let us say we can explain it with the help of this diagram now see this is a round body it is called as a head group these are having two hydrocarbon chains and these two hydrocarbon chains are known as the tail region of a lipid molecule. Out of this, this head, it is hydrophilic. You know what is meant by hydrophilic? Hydrophilic means that uh, uh, they are water loving. That means they attract water molecules. Besides, this is a tail structure. There are two tails here and this tail is actually hydrophobic. Now what we mean by hydrophobic? It means water repelling. What happens now? Now you imagine if something is water repelling then what will happen? It tends to move away from the water molecules. If it is water fill, uh, hydrophilic or water loving, it tends to, it has more affinity for the water molecules. 
Now, in such case, like lipids, we can explain it with the help of uh, an example. Let us assume oil. If you put a drop of oil in the water, what happens? You can see a small droplet. The oil gets concentrated in the center region. So why is it so? The reason is because of the presence of these hydrophilic and hydrophobic bodies. The head region tends to move towards the water part. The other tail, it tends to ripple. And hence, they form a mycelium or a round droplet-like structure, which we can observe in the case of oil. But here, if we have to study about the plasma membrane, can you think, if it is made up of this single layer of these uh, lipid molecules, then what will happen? Outside the cell, there is water. Inside the cell, there is water. So what will happen? They will form a round structure, right? In which either cytoplasm, I mean, they are not going to face either towards outside or towards the cytoplasm. There is no possibility for the cytoplasm to present inside the cell, towards the opposite side of this membrane. So they have to face each side here and hence these head regions are present towards the outer side of the cell as well as towards the inner side. This is possible only when these molecules are arranged in two layers. You can see here this molecule it is present here as the head and the tail. The another molecule if it is arranged in two layers then it will be structured in this way. The tail of the two layers are going to face each other and the head region are going to face opposite to each other. Now this head region of one layer will actually face towards the outside of the cell and the head region of another lipid molecule will face towards interior of the cell. Interior of the cell means towards the cytoplasm. So this is how they are arranged in two layers so as to maintain this particular structure. So as to maintain the inner cavity of the membrane so that the cytoplasm can be present easily in a functional way towards the interior of this particular membrane. So this is how these molecules are present in the bilayer form. Besides that, the tail of molecule is actually flexible. So as these are flexible, now you imagine, if the tail will move apart, then what will happen? The intermolecular distance of these lipid molecules can change. And if this change takes place, the permeability can also change. And this is why we say that the, uh, this particular membrane is semi-permeable because that permeability will vary according to the type of molecules present inside the membrane as well as the position. So this is how the permeability is actually affected due to the tail portion of this bilayer structure. Further, they are comprised of proteins. Now these proteins, there are different types of proteins. Physical properties or the chemical properties suggest that these proteins, they can be hydrophobic, they can be hydrophilic or so on. A same protein can have different kinds of ends. So in short, such type of specific features actually defines the location of the proteins in the membrane. Depending on its position in the membrane, there are two types of proteins. One is intrinsic proteins, the another one is extrinsic proteins. Intrinsic proteins are those which are located within the bilayer structure of lipids. You can see the diagram here. In this diagram, these are the two layers. And in between these proteins are located which are completely embedded within the layer. So they are crossing from outside to inside of the cell. And such type of proteins are actually meant for forming the channels. You remember we have discussed these during studying the diffusion.
So these proteins which are present across the membrane or through the membrane from outside to inside they are known as intrinsic proteins and these intrinsic proteins they are responsible for forming the channels in the membrane and thus these channels will support the movement of various large sized molecules by facilitated diffusion. Besides this, there are certain other proteins that is extrinsic protein. Now these extrinsic proteins, they are located where? As the name is suggesting, that means exterior to the membrane. So what does this mean? That these extrinsic proteins, they are present either towards the outer side of the membrane or towards the inner surface of the membrane. And these are called as extrinsic proteins. You can see in this diagram, they are located here on the surface. So these are called as extrinsic protein. Now these can serve as the carrier proteins as we have studied already during the facilitated diffusion and they will support the movement of molecules from exterior to the interior or vice versa. Besides that, there are certain proteins which are also having the attached carbohydrate chains or some other type of functional groups over it. That means they are the complex proteins. The complex that means protein which is having certain other attached molecules. Now these attached molecules will actually help, it will serve as a receptor molecule or it serves as a, it will help in the, in recognizing certain enzymes in surrounding or the substrate in surrounding or we can say like uh, hormones or transmitters or whatever. The specific surface such type of molecules, they are called as the receptor molecules. They will support the recognition of various conditions in the surrounding of the cell. So this is how the proteins are present and the function is being maintained. Now we can summarize the function of lipids as well as the proteins in the membrane. Like lipids, they are basically providing the flexibility to the membrane. That means it controls the permeability of the membrane. Whereas the proteins which are present, they will serve as the enzyme receptor, not only the enzyme receptor, but as an enzyme itself or the receptor for other kind of signal molecules in the surrounding. So, this is how the function of the protein as well as lipid is serving its own function. Now, the functions of plasma membrane, they could be summarized. The structure is basically we have done now. Now functions. Can you think what functions would be played by these uh, plasma membrane now? The plasma membrane, it will control the exchange of material in and out of the cell. And this we have studied so well till now. We have studied about the diffusion. We have studied about the osmosis. So this type of processes like uh, osmosis and the diffusion will control the movement of molecules in and out of the cell in a controlled manner. Besides, the plasma membrane can serve as a barrier. Why barrier? Because it is forming a boundary so that the content of uh, cytoplasm would not run away from the cell or the content present in the surrounding environment will not get mixed up with the content of the cytoplasm. Further, it also helps in the flow of material within the cell because there is the presence of membrane bound organisms also. So within the cell also, the cell membrane can support such type of movement. Besides, it can help in the processes like endocytosis, phagocytosis, exocytosis. Study about each point in a little bit detail. So the first point we have discussed is about the exchange of material. We studied that this exchange can occur by the diffusion. And if it is suppose for water, 
then it can take place by the osmosis. Now, in short, we can say that the movements of this material, it can take place in two ways. Either it is by the passive transport or it is via active transport. What is passive transport? We have already done in detail. Passive transport is a mode, it is a transport of molecules in which the energy molecules are not utilized. And it always takes place downhill. That means from a region of high concentration to a region of its low concentration of the solute. Now such process is basically known as diffusion. So the membrane can support the movement of uh, these molecules by the simple diffusion method if the size of these molecules is small. If it is larger, the diffusion can be supported by certain additional molecules and thus it is known as facilitated diffusion. Facilitated which is actually it means that it is supported by the certain protein molecules. As we have studied about the protein channels or we can say the carrier proteins, extrinsic and uh, intrinsic protein. They are forming the carrier molecules in the membrane or they are functioning as the channels. So this protein is showing the channel. So the molecules from outer side or from one of the sides from its high concentration, it will move across the membrane through these channels. And why is it so? Because the size is so large that they cannot move across the lipid layer from the in the membrane. The other another type of facilitatory molecule which supports the diffusion is the carrier protein. Further, there is another method of transport. It is by the active transport. In this, the energy rich molecule, you know the example, it is ATP. So this adenosine triphosphate, that is ATP molecule, it is providing the energy to open these particular channels here and or the gates here and thus providing advantage for the molecules to move from its low concentration site to the high concentra concentration site also. So it can take place by the active transport also. Besides, Plasma membrane is serving as a barrier. Why we are calling it as a barrier? The reason is because it is forming a boundary line in surrounding the cell. This layer in the surrounding keeps the inner and outer system of the cell away from each other. It won't allow the mixing up of these two environments. Not only this much. Cell membrane is also present across the cell organelles in case of eukaryotic cell. So these membranes surrounding the organelle will also maintain the inner image of the cell. For example, there are so many organelles present within the cytoplasm. This is the nucleus here. You can see the nucleus. Now these are endoplasmic reticulum. Now these two are in close proximity, but still the content of nucleus won't move into the content of the endoplasmic reticulum. And how is it possible? It is possible because of the presence of this cellular membrane. This cellular membrane will actually serve as a barrier so as to keep the content separate. Similarly, the mitochondria or the Golgi apparatus. In short, you can take example of any of the organelle and the cytoplasm. They won't get mixed up because of the presence of the cell membrane. Also, the internal environment of cytoplasm, it cannot mix up with the outer side because of the presence of the plasma membrane. And thus, you can imagine now, if suppose, the plasma membrane gets ruptured because of any reason. So what will happen? Exactly. If it is a very minor injury, it may get repaired. But if it is rupturing, then definitely the inner and outer environment will get mixed up. Then the integrity is not maintained. And due to this, the cells will get die.
it is not able to survive. Hence, this maintenance of the barrier is very, very important. Further, the cell membrane also controls the flow of material. Now, what you mean by the flow of material? We have already studied the exchange of material. What is the difference? Now, in this point or in this topic, we will actually influence over the intracellular movement. That is, the flow of material between the different organelles and the cytoplasm. Or we can say, organelle and cytoplasm or one organelle to the another organelle. The picture is shown below here. Let us try to understand with the help of this. Let us say, we can see the diagram of nucleus. This is a cell. In this, this is a nucleus. This is showing the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Then here, this is the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, and this is the cell membrane. Now, let us assume endoplasmic reticulum, it is meant for the synthesis of proteins and lipids. Now, proteins, they can serve as regulator, receptor, enzyme and so on. So uh, where the, uh, these enzymes or these molecules would be required in each and every part of the cell. Also, the specific cells are producing specific types of proteins on the another substances. So they have to be transferred to the target site. For example, let us say mitochondria. Mitochondria is involved in the synthesis of energy-rich molecules. So, these energy-rich molecules are ATP. The formation of ATP will need the enzyme. Enzyme is chemically a protein. Where this protein will be formed? It will be formed in the endoplasmic reticulum. So, once it is formed or it is synthesized, it will be transferred to the Golgi apparatus in the form of vesicle. So they are transported here, then they are modified, packaged and would be packed in the vesicle or we can say in the form of vacuole. Then from here, they need to pass to the target site. So these membranes, they are actually allowing the transport or the packaging or these are the just the extensions or the extensions of the system of the Golgi apparatus. In short, these membranes which are present over the Golgi apparatus, they will extend and they will form a round structure. Inside this round structure, there is a cavity in which this material which has to be transported has been packed. Then from here, it will move around and it will reach the target site. If it is an enzyme for ATP synthesis, then it will reach the mitochondria. But if it is some another protein required in any other part of the cell, it would be transported to that particular part. Now once it gets transported to that target site, then there is a barrier in the form of cell membrane. Now what will happen? This cell membrane either they will get fused or there will be got some uh, receptor sites over these molecules which will recognize the incoming molecule and will allow the entry of the molecule in the next organelle or at the target site. Similarly, if suppose cell membrane, the protein is needed to maintain the structure. So how this protein would be transported? It is done in this particular way. So these membranes, they participate in recognition of such molecules as well as its uh, transport to the another site. The same protein molecule cannot reach to the any of the organelle because of the presence of specific receptor molecules over the cell membrane. This is how it is essentially needed to control the flow of material within the cell, among different organelles or between the cell organelles and the cytoplasm. Besides, there is another role of the plasma membrane that is it supports the processes like phagocytosis endocytosis and the exocytosis. You know what does it mean? Phagocytosis means 
capturing the food particle solid food particle from surrounding and breaking down it inside the vacuum endocytosis means capturing the foreign particle or an um, various material from surrounding and just digesting it by fusing with the lysosomes inside the vacuum exocytosis means the release of undigested material present in the vacuum towards outside now how this plasma membrane supports such type of processes see the diagram is shown here in this case this is the plasma membrane right and the in surrounding suppose food particle is present so what will happen it will be captured it will stick to this membrane and will get invaginated and will form a vacuole then food particle will come inside this vacuole later on it will get fused with the lysosomes these lysosomes they are containing the hydrolytic enzymes so these enzymes will digest these solid material and then the useful material is uh, actually fused out of the membrane and the remaining undigested food material will be released how by when this uh, vacuum will reach towards the plasma membrane it will get fused over this with the plasma membrane and this undigested material will be eliminated so this type of elimination is known as exocytosis so whether it is endocytosis or exocytosis we cannot imagine these processes without the participation of the plasma membrane although the digestion is because of lysosomic material but the engulfing of these material is possible because of the dissolving of this plasma membrane at the specific site so this is the reason why we can say the plasma membrane plays an important role in such type of processes so aside the plasma membrane can be the boundary line as well as it can also maintain the uh, the life of the uh, life of the cell so it is a very important part of the cell and it decides the boundary further we are going to study about the another membrane that is cell wall which is present in some type of cells in the living system so till then thank you so much have a nice day good day